Okay, I'm 90% certain that you did not have the Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie on your 2022 bingo sheet, nor did you expect it to be the movie that is propping up IP flex genre fiction for years to come. But it is, and it's great, and I'm here to tell you about it. Nine times out of ten, if you're watching this channel, you probably were too young to even see the original show, so I am going to give you the skinny very quickly. The original Rescue Rangers was a 1989 action-adventure comedy brought to you by Disney Television Animation as part of the original True Blue Disney Afternoon lineup, a collection of shows that helped kick off the absolute dynasty that is Disney Television Animation. Like most of its peers in the lineup, it was based off of pre-existing Disney characters and IP, which kind of makes it a good uh, jumping-off point for a movie like this. I'm pretty sure the original cartoon was at least loosely modeled off of a old pitch for a TV show about the rescuers. Which is why in 2014, a movie dealing with Chippendale was announced. I know, that was, that was years and years and years ago. From the jump, it was meant to be highly self-referential and meta, and eight years later, here we are with this movie and these cameos, and it turned out to be pretty good. Now, obviously, movies like this are a dime a dozen in current year. It's really easy to just kind of pop out a movie that flexes all 2,600 IPs that one company can own at any given time. But I think this one managed to be a little bit different. Visually, I think this one distinguishes itself quite well. Uh, they managed to meld a lot of different styles and characters together in a way that, that didn't feel super duper out of place, but still managed to get across that this is absolute insanity. I think the studio that handled most of the work for it uh, was the same studio behind Life of Pi and the Jungle Book remake, so they were in pretty good hands. The other few studios that tackled this one were well-known animation studios that do good shit and they have fun doing it, presumably. I don't know. Apparently they brought back one of the original animators from Roger Rabbit to animate Roger Rabbit. On the whole, the effects themselves are pretty good. I know a lot of people have feelings about how uh, the Rescue Rangers in particular are rendered in that weird cell shaded 3D. I think it kind of works. Personally, it doesn't bother me. I think uh, as an audience, us seeing these characters in a, in a 3D plane instead of an entirely 2D one kind of works better for immersion's sake. It's kind of coincidental. I know that they were, they didn't put that much thought into it, but uh, I, I, think, I think it works here. I'm not entirely sold on Mulaney's chip, I'm not gonna lie. It feels a little too flat, even for him. It felt heavily phoned in. I know that's this kind of the point for the character, but uh, I don't know about that one. Definitely played well off of Sandberg's Dale, though, I won't lie. And the celebrity casting in and of itself was not super duper distracting. I think other than Chip and Dale and uh, the secondary villain, and I, I guess Seth Rogen too, I didn't really... No, nobody really stuck out to me too bad. The cameos, on the other hand, are fucking bananas. I, I'm sure that for the next week or two, uh, everybody will be getting their ad rev up just by naming all of the cameos in the film. Obviously, by now, you, you probably know that uh, this film does not just integrate characters from the Disney canon. They brought in some from DreamWorks, from Warner, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, all that good stuff. They went to the four corners of the globe to gather all the, the cartoon references they could muster. And by God, they actually delivered on this one. The lawyers actually did something for the, the greater good of humanity this time. We would not have Ugly Sonic if they didn't go down fighting and swinging. And for that, they've earned my respect. There's literally something for everyone. There's, there's a reference for every age group and demographic of people that has seen one Disney work. It's, it's kind of nuts. The commitment that they made to integrating other characters from other franchises and studios and definitely does fall in line with that philosophical point to try and celebrate animation as a whole. And I do respect that. I think if anyone were to try to pull that off, it, it probably should be a Disney film. One thing that became very clear to me after it was all said and done was that uh, this thing actually had a story to it. It's pretty muddled, you know, at, at points it does kind of uh, lose a bit of its pacing, but it is a very self-involved story. It's quite ambitious, 
and I don't I don't really remember any point in the film where they threw it out for the sake of a quick gag. I think it works. The whole uh, ethos of the, the kidnapping plot, I think that works pretty well for Rescue Rangers. The whole course of Chippendale reigniting their friendship, I think that worked for the most part. And on top of that, they, they don't twist themselves into not trying to explain why cartoons are integrated into a live-action LA. But they don't need to. If they did, it would get it would get too pretentious. I think they have the right amount of care put into the, the narrative elements here. Now, obviously, we probably gotta address the elephant in the room besides a quick aside. This, of course, is a uh, mass multi-crossover that spans across studios and various entities. It is not the first of its kind, it surely will not be the last, but I think in comparison to the rest of the competition, this one actually distinguishes itself pretty well. The nature of doing these films in and of themselves are a gamble, because a lot of the time, people will just write them off as, you know, it's, it's fun and it's cool and I, I like it. But a lot of other times, there are some, some actual stakes to it that, that can be mangled to bits by all the references and things. Which is something that I think they avoided pretty well here. I think the whole thread of whether or not, or, or to what extent, we can write certain things off as just fun, ergo nothing else matters, is, is an important tat. I think it's something we probably should have been addressing before we got to the fucking <laughs> Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie, but I mean, while we're here, obviously in comparison to the Space Jams or maybe the Ready Player ones, this one has a story that it kind of takes seriously. It's overambitious. It didn't fall into the trap of just kind of having the story just to have it or setting it up and then getting too lost in the details. It maintains relevancy all throughout, and it takes itself seriously to a degree that you probably wouldn't expect. Like I said, I think they put their money where their mouth was, uh, trying to integrate characters from other studios was a, a smart choice. I think the tone of the movie in general it definitely does try to experiment with the emotional depth that it brings to it, but it doesn't beat you over the head, it, it doesn't feel super manipulative, you're just kind of watching everything play out, and I think that the way that it played out was, was pretty solid. Despite all of the, the plot holes and, and the certain holes in the pacing and, and everything, uh, it, it came out on top. Relatively speaking, it, it would probably be difficult to even keep track of the, the amount of cameos you're gonna get, let alone the actual story. But they kept their finger on the pulse, and they focused on what was important. I'm not gonna lie, the leak did seem kind of interesting, and I do wonder what the movie would have been like if they'd went with their original idea for the villain, which I will not reveal, but if you know it, then you know it would have been absolutely wild. I, I think it would have been a much more creative choice, honestly. I don't really feel like the villain was uh, this weird deconstruction of Bobby Driscoll's life or whatever it ended up being. It was kind of just uh, circumstantial, like the passage of time and everything. That was the real villain of the story here, which totally worked. Uh, no, no shade to the, the true villain of the movie. So in general, is uh, Chippendale's Rescue Rangers the movie good? Relatively speaking, yeah. It's pretty fun, it's pretty immersive, and I think you'll you'll get a lot out of it just by trying to follow the batshit story alone. It took its world and its characters seriously, and it made uh, the optimal effort to try to integrate everybody in as amicably as possible. Audiences love it, critics seem to love it at the moment. It's a lot of unexpected praise for it I did not expect, but I'm glad it's getting the attention it deserves. Part of the reason why its success would be a net positive for everyone is because ideas in movies like these uh, are, are definitely going to reflect well. As far as other DTVA projects go, this will definitely go a long way in trying to sell those. Uh, I know they've been working on a, a Darkwing TV series, and this undoubtedly will help aid that. If they wanted to go and expand upon other franchises, this would also be the way to sell them in future. In layman's terms, if Chip and Dale are eaten, the rest of us are probably eaten too. Maybe we'll get a sequel, maybe we'll get an actual reboot of the show. However they do it, I hope they manage to knock it out of the park like they did here. This is a, a delicately crafted return to form for these characters, and 
while it's not the, the best interpretation it could have went with, it still stands on its own pretty well. If it were scientifically accurate, it would have been a whole different conversation. Guys, I found a chipmunk. 